This is the Southern Tier Ride, day five from Yuma to the rest area north of Dateland. It's the Sentinel rest area on Interstate 8. The adventure cycling route is actually different. It takes you around Yuma, doesn't go into Yuma. And if you can see the map to the right, it takes you around the farmland area and avoids the hills. I see nothing wrong with going that way. I didn't want to because I was staying at a, a truck stop just outside of Yuma in the Fortuna foothill area. And uh, anyway, I, I didn't want to go that way. You you may want to. There's there's no problem going that way if you want a, a nice little hill, easy hill climb. That you can go the same way I did. So let's start the ride and. Uh, how close I am. Um, just getting ready now to uh, get on the freeway. And uh, turning left, going north east on the freeway out of town, slowly going over the hills. You can see the hill in the distance. Actually, you can see it, how the road is going to go there. You can see shortly I will be leading all of the uh, incorporated area of the Yuma vicinity. It was actually uh, very pleasant ride up this hill. And, uh, this was the main climb. If you look down at the bottom of the map, you can see the elevation map, and uh, that's the hill. Wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of traffic on the road, and uh, it made for a gentle, easy ride up over the, if you want to call it, pass. So, this ride was 72 miles long and lasted for five and a half hours. Average speed has been because this was an easy ride. My average speed over the whole day was which is pretty quick. Uh, but there was nothing difficult about this thing. Now you can see we're now going under the other freeway, kind of like the grapevine in California. At this point, we're getting ready to go down the hill. <laughs> the shoulder was fine. I enjoyed the downhill ride, and uh, nothing unusual here. You can see again, cross back over now, and we're getting back to the flat area of the ride. Here on up for the rest of this ride for me. You can see there's nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. Really exciting about it. Um, it's just flat land. I can go one more down in the distance. I can see. 
appreciated in the immediate distance, there's no one else, but there is way, way in the distance. Now, the adventure cycling route may in fact take you through the farmland to the left, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I would enjoy that ride over there any more than riding down the freeway, uh, other than you would get to see some crops. And I'll leave that choice up to you. I actually don't mind the freeway ride. Now, total ascent during this day was 1,458 feet, approximately. Total descent, 1,117 feet. And minimum elevation was 240 feet. Maximum elevation was only 798 feet. So, there's not much. It's, it's basically flat it's, and there wasn't a, you can see there's not a lot of wind out here uh, when I do day six there's a horrendous wind at 16 to 20 miles an hour uh, and some of those were cross, cross winds which made it kind of rough but Here, there was enough to do there. You can see on a few spots, the road is a little rough and broken up there. But it's not terribly bad throughout the day. There are a few rough, rougher patches. So... This is just kind of, you have to go through this area in order to get up to the Phoenix area, which is the area that I can stand to live in. Uh, I live in Florence, outside of Phoenix, in the southeast part of the area. And that's where I'm actually riding. So on this route, and I kind of recommend going this way, on the adventure cycling route in the southern tier. Uh, when we get up to Pila Bend, Pila Bend, tomorrow you can go straight north and get into Phoenix, or you can then turn east and head towards uh, the Tucson uh, Casa Grande. <coughs> somewhere area so uh, that that's a choice that you make if you want to see Phoenix then I highly recommend going north to Gila Bend and going through that part of Phoenix I myself don't want to ride through Phoenix so I took an alternate route uh, you certainly get a lot more residential area and a lot more places to stop going north and to the bend. However, that would be the day after this, depending on how you make the stops. Uh, for me, it, it was the uh, next day. This was 72 miles total, as I said already, so I'm not really going looking try to make a good mile day. Uh, I don't need to. And 72 seems a nice round number to max out in, in this 70, 75 mile range. Uh, I was never bothered by traffic in the freeway. None of these big rigs ever came close. Uh, in fact, most of them drove in the other lane so that they would have no effect on you. Whether you uh, ride the freeway and where there is a side road, take that. that I'm going to leave that up to you. My preference is the freeway. So up 
here shortly. I'm going to have a stop and I'm actually going to uh, switch with my wife where she's going to ride 14 miles. And uh, she's going to be going up over this little rise if you look down the bottom in the middle of the elevation chart. And then I will start over after that. Now, as I've said in my other videos, we're, we're doing this videotaping at uh, 10 times the normal speed. And its disadvantage is you don't see clearly how that road really is. The main advantage and the reason I'm doing it this way is you can actually see the entire road that I've ridden from San Diego uh, all the way to Phoenix have an idea of what the shoulder looks like, where it's good, where it's bad, and uh, I've pointed out the really bad parts of the road, and I think you can actually see that. When this road does get bad, you can see it, even at this speed. This is the switch that we made, so... Now I apologize. The reason the video isn't up correctly is I adjusted the, uh, the GoPro mount on Vicky and had it down too far. Obviously, it should be up a little higher. That would be nice. But on the other hand, uh, get to see the ground a lot clearer here. <laughs> um, I'm a little behind on the video on the right. I apologize. But hopefully we'll, we'll match up here shortly. What, what Vicky's doing is actually slowly going up here. so gentle. Oh, there you go. She's going up over that hill and down the other side. So, that's what's happening here. And, uh, so you can see the scenery hasn't changed any. She's not going really by anywhere where she can really stop. Quite frankly, if we pointed it up, you wouldn't see much. 
much of anything anyway. Again, I, I admit this is more of an endurance ride through here because there isn't much to see. And it's more getting from one place to the other and accomplishing the task. Involving the ride in the southern tier. So shortly she'll be going up over the hill and going down the hill. I take over what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride for one hour and just try and go as fast as I can. So I'm putting about 85% of my effort out to try to sustain it for the entire whole. The entire hour and get as close to the rest area as possible. Vicky was going to ride to get to the rest area. It ended up that I was only like a mile and a half from the rest area, so I finished the ride. Kind of a ways to change for that short distance. We were thinking of going to more like five miles. So, uh, during that one hour, I think I covered up there. So here she's going through the downhill. Rest is the gentle uphill for the rest of the day. And she is now at the rest of the day. And we're swapping out. And I'm going to be taking over. And let's see if we can get these matched up here. Uh, I'm just trying to match up the video so that uh, apparently we uh, stopped it for quite a, a long time. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
United and uh, I don't think we've passed it. back and forth, that's to avoid some of the bumps in the tree. But it, this, on this day, the road was never that bumpy. It, it uh, made me want to not be riding on the freeway. In the day six's ride, I can tell you the road to Gila Bend was terrible when I actually would have ridden the surface road. But for the fact that up over these overpasses was the narrowest part of the ride, but it wasn't all that bad. You saw that it sufficient shoulder piece they So now all we're doing is uh, having a race down to the center of the street. And I'm not sure on the map to the right, I know it has center. signal two or three more minutes and she thought about three more miles. So we rode past that. That was a nice signal to charge. So from here on out, it's a short ride. You can see even looking at the bottom. We're close to the rest area and the end of the ride. I appreciate uh, you viewing this video. If you can make comments on how you think I can improve it, let me know. I will uh, accept any positive comments because I'm learning this. I'm trying to do this and want to make it more enjoyable. And if you can like it, then you can it too. I will be posting all the videos that I do on this ride. So here we are, one and a half miles from the rest area. So, again, uh, 
thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you'll watch the next video.